reinstated Vikram Bakshi as the MD of Connaught Plaza restaurants, an equal joint venture between Bakshi and McDonald's that operates the fast food chain in North and East India. This brings to an end a three-year-long protracted legal battle between the US-based food giant and Bakshi. We have Vikram Bakshi joining us now. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us on the show. Also with us is Prashant Nayar and Priya Shade joining us to take us through this conversation. Guys, over to you. Uh, Arunji, thanks very much. Mr. Bakshi, thank you very much for speaking with CNBC TV 18 first. Sir. Congratulations first up from all of us here. Uh, it's been a long battle. You've come out on top. You've been reinstated as the uh, chief at the company. Uh, your first reaction on uh, the NCLT order itself, what you think is worth, you know, uh, what in the order really stands out and what really is the way forward as you see it from here? First of all, I feel fully vindicated that uh, the NCLT has, uh, has stated clearly that our case of oppression has been proved. Uh, further, uh, what one is elated about is that it has put into position uh, a methodology on the basis of which the company can uh, go back to its original uh, functions, original way of working. Hmm. Which is essentially the fact that they've appointed an ex-Supreme Court judge, right? Who will weigh in in board meetings, etc. So, in reality, what will happen is that uh, while I, I regain my saddle of the managing director, uh, the purpose of really putting an administrator is largely to ensure that decisions for the benefit of the company are taken. You do appreciate this is a 50-50 joint venture. Uh, and uh, either partner could hold up uh, the, 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 the function of the company on the basis of the voting rights. Uh, so the, uh, the, the uh, NCLT chairman uh, and, the, uh, and the other member has very clearly stated uh, that the purpose of putting the administrator in this place is to ensure that decisions for the benefit of the company are pushed through. Uh, Mr. Bakshi, I wanted to understand, you know, while as we speak, there are some proceedings that are still remaining in uh, the London Court of uh, International Arbitration. Uh, so what is the really going to be your strategy out there? Will you be taking the NCLT order there? And how soon can we expect resolution? See, one of the other things, if you go carefully through the order, uh, which is of great importance, is that the NCLT has stated that all steps pursuant to my, uh, my non-re-election of, uh, of MD uh, is, uh, is malicious, is, uh, is unfair, is wrong. Uh, and therefore, we believe, uh, and that's my belief, that uh, the NCLT order has a fast-reaching effect uh, because you remember that arbitration started only after uh, the, the first step, and that was uh, my non-re-election. So in terms of uh, legal proceedings going forward, is there a timeline that you have in mind and uh, how soon can we expect things to normalize going forward? Well, <laughs> what can one say? Uh, the normal, normalcy would normally return when two partners can sit across the table and start out the issues. Uh, and one really hopes uh, that with this decision, uh, which is very clear, categorical, uh, there will be some rethinking and uh, we could sit across the table and, and bring normalcy back uh, to the lives of about 7,000 people that work with us. Uh, so just to sort of pick up uh, from where my uh, colleague left off, the London uh, arbitration proceedings can go either way. I'm just trying to understand, uh, hypothetically, if they were to rule in favor of McDonald's, which, which is the order which is going to stand? I mean, what the NCLT has said or what the arbitration uh, court decides? Well, I am not a lawyer, so uh, I don't think I can effectively answer your question. Uh, but the fact of the matter Spoken is with that, your lawyers uh, in terms of what happens if they go the other way. So I'm just trying to understand broadly. So, so, yeah. so here's what uh, my belief is. My belief is that the NCLT proceedings uh, is dated, is the one that started first. So therefore, uh, my belief is that the NCLT order, uh, which is far-reaching, and far more comprehensive than what an arbitration could do uh, should be the one that, uh, that should be more effective. However, having said that, uh, remember that uh, the NCLT itself has said that all steps taken pursuant 
to, uh, to the uh, non-re-election are, uh, are unfair, unjust, and malicious. Uh, Mr. Bakshi, the, the, the order is scathing. I mean, absolutely. I mean, we've gone through the main points of the order, and it's absolutely scathing. So it's very clear uh, where the court here stands. Uh, the point, though, is that when you entered into the joint venture with McDonald's, you would have agreed, uh, you know, where cases, disputes, etc., would be heard. I'm assuming that's how the London, uh, uh, the, the arbitration has gone uh, to the London uh, court. The international arbitration is happening there. So you would have agreed to it when you entered the joint venture, right? Correct. Right. So then, in that case, since you agreed to it in the first place and it's now there, and they decide one way or the other, wouldn't that be the, uh, I mean, wouldn't that in a way override whatever the NCLT has said? Well, again, you know, I, I, I can't be the one to, uh, to, to comment on that, and I'm sure there are enough legal experts which will argue on either side. Uh, so I, I think we'll have to leave it to what the final decision uh, of the arbitration is going to be. Uh, but from our side, we have already informed the arbitrators that this is the order that has come in the NCLT and they should take cognizance of this order. When, why, when do we, uh, are you sort of expecting, is it close to a verdict there? Well, again, I, uh, you know, okay. cannot say that. Uh, uh, there's a program which is set up. I, I guess uh, it's left to the arbitrators to decide when they write the order and, and uh, you know, give the verdict. Mr. Bakshi, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty clear, uh, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that this joint venture after these differences over all these years and these very stiff differences uh, isn't exactly durable from here. Would you agree with me? Well, you know, if you, if you ask me, I do not believe so. Because if you see right up to 2012 end, uh, we were putting in more money into the joint venture. So if this joint venture was seriously into trouble, why would the partners continue to put money into the, into the joint venture? Why would you increase the pace of your growth? Remember, we opened 27 restaurants uh, in the year of 2012. And uh, there is enough record which says that there was not even a thought of winding up this joint venture. Yes, of course, McDonald's had been trying all along to buy my shareholding, uh, which they started out as far back as 2008. But while continuing to make offers, we continue to make progress. Hmm. Uh, so it, is, it was shocking to us, and I think that's what the order says, that the way they went about uh, not re-electing me as the MD, and then uh, you know, pushing for the call option to try and buy my shares, uh, you know, I, I think the verdict is very clear that whole act was malicious. Mr. Bakshi, do you seriously believe that McDonald's uh, and you as 50-50 joint venture can continue, say, for another five years, ten years? I mean, what, is the, what are the chances of that? After so much, I mean, if, you, if one reads through the order, and as, as I said, we have gone through the main parts of it, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite damning and very serious and strong language, right? So there are very stiff, serious differences over the last couple of years. I take your point, till 2012, money was being put in, but it's been a few years since then. I mean, what, what's really the resolution here? So again, I guess... Um this is a question that's best asked uh, from McDonald's. Uh, I've been uh, given a job right now uh, by the NCLT uh, to go back and uh, get the company back into action to, uh, to uh, resaddle the position of the MD and to uh, you know, ensure uh, that we take all decisions for the benefit of the company. Now, it's for McDonald's to decide that is this a, is this a, a fight of two individuals? I do not believe so. Uh, is it something uh, that, that, is, uh, uh, that is irreversible? I do not think so. So it's, it's a call that they have to take. If, uh, Mr. Bakshi, you know, so let me just uh, sort of put, uh, put you on the spot in a way. If McDonald's decides to pull, their, uh, uh, you know, pull out, I mean, essentially take the brand away. I mean, you have the network, they have the brand, right? Um, but without the brand, there is no McDonald's. So what options would you have then? So if you see the joint venture agreement, that's not what, what it envisaged. Mm. It envisaged 25 years of working together with the brand. Mm. Uh, so if you are asking me, did I build restaurants? No. Restaurants was just a part of what I built. What I built was the brand. The effort that has been put in by us Indians is in developing the brand and getting it to the position of number one as far back as 2000, uh, early 2013. 
So, you know, if somebody says, and their belief is that uh, you just snatch the brand and everything comes down tumbling, mm. well, the truth is that we all work towards developing the brand, and that's what we should be trying to save and not destroy. No, no, I, I completely uh, take your point, and I think there's no one who's tracked the journey of McDonald's and the successes that you've had over the years uh, would say, sort of say otherwise, absolutely. But the fact remains that uh, McDonald's owns the brand, right? And there have been serious differences over the last few years. There has been a case, and one case is still going on. McDonald's may decide that they don't want to be in the joint venture anymore, or they don't want you in the joint venture anymore. I mean, that essentially uh, seems to be what the case was all about. I mean, uh, the, the, the crux of it. So if they pull out, what options do you have? Do, can you go solo? All, all one says is when two partners can get around uh, with each other, I think the best thing is to sit across the table, sort out the issues, and make sure that the other partner who exists is given a fair valuation for the hard work that the partner put in. I think it's as simple as that. So It's a question of who bells the cat. <laughs> so, you, so you're close to, uh, I mean, you're not saying it, but you're saying that you'd be open to selling out your stake if given a fair valuation. Is that what you're telling us, sir? Oh, well, that's always been the case. Mm. If you see right from 2008, mm. when they first made me an offer, that's all I said. Yeah. You know, that's okay. It's a journey. Yeah. You take a journey up to a certain point and you take off. So that's what it was. All that one said was, treat me fairly for what I have done. Give me a valuation that is as per the laws of the country. And what is the right valuation according to you? Well, the valuation, why should I be the one to judge what is the right valuation? Hmm. All one can say, there is another venture which looks after a part of the country. As I understand today, it's valued at about 3,500 crores. Now, I'm not trying to give a valuation to my uh, venture on that basis. All I'm saying is, just go ahead and give it to any of the four largest companies that exist. Put it out there and let them do the work. There are a number of ways on which you can bell the cat. The fact of the matter is, all these companies know how to do a fair market valuation. Why should they be shy of it? Three years back, when this entire dispute started, was it about valuation, Mr. Bakshi? Sorry? Uh, when three years back, when the dispute started, right, when you were not re-elected, re uh, was it about valuation? I mean, you not being able to agree at a right valuation? Well, three years back, we were growing rapidly. Mm. Uh, so where was the question of talking about valuations at that time? At that time, it was more about trying to see how we could grow and grow rapidly. What was the basic issue? What, what was the basic... Uh, I mean, so we've, we've seen what NCLT has said, right? And uh, they kind of dismiss some of the allegations that uh, McDonald's made against you. Uh, they've, com they've termed it completely unfair. Uh, but... If it is not valuation, because, you know, there is Westlife, as you said, which has franchise for McDonald's in the south and western part of the country. Uh, that was basically 100% owned by the Jatia family. Uh, I mean, so it is not as if that was a 50-50 joint venture. It was 100% by uh, owned by an Indian entity. And then recently, they did an IPO. Not that, uh, I mean, not fairly recently, they did a, came out with an IPO. So it is not about control, really. They, McDonald's is okay about... 100% of the business being controlled by an Indian entity. So there was obviously more to it, right? So let me, Prashant, run you a little bit into the history of the whole thing. The two joint ventures were signed together. Both started as 50-50 joint ventures right up to 2010. When McDonald's sold off its share to Mr. Jatia for 1% of their original investment. Now, that is something I'm sure they will tell you it is our responsibility, it's us who want to do whatever we want to do, uh, you leave it to us. That's fine, you can throw away your valuation for nothing. But you can't take away my valuation or what it is. So just to correct you, it was never 100% all the way. 100% it only became sometimes around 2000. Mr. Bakshi, are you there? Okay, I think we the free the the.